Hello everyone, this is Hiroki Sayama. I apologize for not being able to be here to present my talk in person. I was here at Netsai conference until yesterday, but right now I'm on my flight going to Japan because of my other work duties. Fortunately, my grad student, Farnas, has agreed to present this pre-recorded talk on my behalf. So I'm here virtually. Thank you, Farnas. Okay, so my talk today is about Graph product multi-layer networks. I'm going to define what it is, discuss what their mathematical properties are, and demonstrate how they can be used for the modeling and analysis of complex networks. Details can be found in the archive preprint linked from here. A quick disclaimer. The graph product is not really a new stuff. It has been already well established in discrete mathematics, and maybe some of you are already using it. So my objective here is to introduce the concept and some examples to the broader NetSci community in a systematic manner so that everybody can benefit from this mathematically really neat framework. Okay, the whole idea of this talk is multiplication. Multiplication is such a simple thing to think about. For example, 2 times 2 makes 4 because really 2 times 2 2 makes 4. It's very easy. But what if we are to apply the same idea to networks? Like, what if we multiply the karate club graph by the karate club graph itself? This kind of multiplication operation is called graph product, and there are several different ways to define it. In this work, I will begin with three major definitions of graph product. They are called Cartesian product, direct product, and strong product. In all of those, you first create a Cartesian product of the two node sets of the factor networks. Let's call this a set of meta nodes here. These meta nodes can be organized into multiple groups or layers, which is why we call them graph product multilayer networks. These three products differ in terms of how you are connecting those meta nodes. Let me explain one by one. The first one, a Cartesian product of two networks, is the most straightforward way to define a graph product. You keep one of the original factor networks in each layer and connect its node to itself in other layers, following the pattern given by the other factor network. This operation can be written down mathematically using the Kronecker sum of two adjacency matrices but I'm not going to get into the details of math in this talk. This Cartesian product has some very nice mathematical properties in terms of its spectrum. The degree sequence, the adjacency spectrum, and the Laplacian spectrum of a Cartesian product multilayer network can be obtained exactly from the spectra of its two-factor networks. They are just the sums of individual degrees or eigenvalues of its factor networks collected for all their combinations. The second example of graph product operations is the direct product, also known as tensor product. In this case, you calculate the Kronecker product of the adjacency matrices of the two factor networks, and then use it as the supra adjacency matrix of the resulting graph product. This means that two meta nodes in the product are connected if and only if their component nodes are connected in both factor networks. The spectral properties of this direct product multilayer network also can be computed, or estimated at least, from the spectral properties of its factor networks. In this case, the degree sequence and the adjacency spectrum of the product network are obtained exactly again by calculating the products of individual degrees of eigenvalues of its factor networks. The Laplacian spectrum is not exactly computable, but I previously published a heuristic approximation to estimate its Laplacian spectrum, so that's also good news. The third graph product operation is the strong product. This is really just the sum of the previous two, Cartesian and direct graph products. And just like the direct product, the degree sequence and the adjacency spectrum of the strong graph product are computable exactly 
while its Laplacian spectrum can be estimated using heuristics. These three graph product operations are all commutative and associative. They all create a network of networks, quote unquote. So, as I said before, you can consider each of the subnetworks as a layer, and then the resulting graph product can be understood as a graph product multi layer network. It can be used as a mathematically elegant way to construct certain types of multi layer networks. The background information is now over, and here begins the new stuff. What I did in this paper was to extend the definition of graph product multilayer networks so that they can be applied to the modeling and analysis of a wider variety of complex systems. To be more specific, I extended the graph product operations to non-simple networks that can involve directed edges, weighted edges, signed edges, and slash or self loops. I also generalized the definition of the strong product to any arbitrary linear combinations of Cartesian and direct products. These extensions and generalizations are based on some boring mathematical work, so I will skip those details here. Here is the bottom line. All the previously reported spectral relationships between graph product multilayer networks and their factor networks are essentially maintained as is in the extended generalized versions. This is really cool, and now we can use graph product multilayer networks as a model of various kinds of complex systems that cannot be described as a simple graph. In the rest of this talk, I'd like to present some of the applications of graph product multilayer networks to convince you that this can be a useful theoretical framework. One possible scenario of its application is to approximate the structure of large-scale networks so that you can make an analytical estimate of their spectral properties. This is kind of similar to what the mean field approximation does to the analysis of dynamical systems with large degrees of freedom. It doesn't capture the true complexity of the actual system, but it provides theoretically meaningful reference values, which may still be very useful. Here's an example. Imagine a large-scale network whose structure is approximated by a stochastic block model made of communities of equal size. This is essentially the same as saying that the adjacency matrix of a network is approximated by its coarse-grained stochastic matrix. In this case, the approximated adjacency matrix is given by a Kronecker product of a stochastic matrix and an all one matrix, which makes this an example of a directed product multilayer network. Therefore, its spectral properties can be studied using the spectral properties of stochastic matrix and the all one matrix. How about predicting the epidemic threshold on this multilayer network? As many of you already know, the epidemic threshold is given by the inverse of the largest eigenvalue of an adjacency matrix, so this can be analytically computed from the largest eigenvalues of those two factor networks. The all one matrix has its size as the largest eigenvalue, and because the adjacency spectrum of a directed product multilayer network is given by the product of eigenvalues of the factor networks, all you need to do is to calculate the largest eigenvalue of the stochastic matrix, and then multiply that by the number of communities in the model. This approximation turns out to work really well. Here is a result of a bunch of numerical simulations, where the vertical axis is the actual largest eigenvalue of a network created using a stochastic block model, and the horizontal axis is the estimated one using the graph product based method described here. A pretty good correlation, right? The second application of graph product multilayer networks is to use the two factor networks to represent space and time. For example, a directed product of space and time factor networks represents a random walk process with enforced temporal progress. Other graph products can also offer some physically meaningful interpretations. But this idea may sound rather weird. You may wonder, sure, space can be represented as a network, 
But how come we need to use a network to represent time, which is essentially just a linear sequential thing? Well, the answer is, if you use a network as a representation of time, you can describe many non-trivial temporal structures, such as cyclical nature of time in a seasonal process. Here's an example. A spatial network represents a social network structure on which something spreads, such as disease or rumor. And let's use a directed cycle for the temporal network, which represents cyclical nature of time, like month in a year, for example. By creating a graph product of those two factor networks, you can study the dynamical properties of spreading on a space time network in a very computationally efficient way. For example, let's imagine that you are a public health policymaker who needs to decide how to allocate resources over time to prevent epidemics. Allocation of resources means the reduction of the propagation probability. You could allocate all the resources to just one month to reduce the propagation probability of that month significantly without doing anything at other times. Or perhaps you could spread the resources throughout the year to reduce the propagation probability all year around. Given that the amount of resources is finite, which strategy is better to prevent epidemics? This question can be answered by calculating the largest eigenvalue of the adjacency matrix of the space-time graph product. And here's the result. The parameter C is the amount of total resource you spend. The horizontal axis is how many months you will allocate the resources to. And the vertical axis is the largest eigenvalue. The smaller, the better. You can easily see in this result that concentrating your resource to a particular time point is best in this scenario. Similar modeling and analysis can also be applied to other cases, such as marketing. In this scenario, your objective is instead to increase the largest eigenvalue to promote the propagation of information about your commercial product. But in this case, you will find that you will need to spend your resource all the time in a year in order to promote your stuff. In either case, the calculation of the largest eigenvalues was very simple and easy because the spatial temporal dynamics was represented as a graph product multi-layer network. Similar representation is also possible for other scenarios in which two or more orthogonal network spaces are involved together in a dynamical process. The final example is a little bit abstract and esoteric. But this was actually the original motivation why I began working on graph product multilayer networks. That motivation was to study the higher order properties of self-similar graph product multilayer networks that can be obtained by raising a network to a higher order power. I call them self-similar because their interlayer structures are similar to their intralayer structures, and also because mathematically, as order increases to infinity, their adjacency matrices become infinite fractal matrices. With this idea, we can ask questions like, what does the Karate Club graph raised to the power of 100 look like? Well, obviously, such a higher order power of a network can easily reach an astronomically large size, so there is no computationally explicit way to investigate their topology. However, because of the mathematically nice properties of graph product multilayer networks, we can predict what is going to happen to the spectral properties of such higher order self-similar network. Long story short, the spectral properties of Cartesian product self-similar networks will asymptotically become a normal distribution with the mean and standard deviation growing linearly and along the square root of the order, respectively, as the order increases. Similarly, the degree and adjacency spectral properties of direct product self-similar networks will asymptotically become a log normal distribution if you take only the absolute values of eigenvalues. A similar conclusion can also be reached with a small mathematical correction for the strong product self-similar networks as well. Please see the preprint for more details. Here are some numerical results showing the spectral histograms of self-similar multilayer networks and their analytical estimates showing pretty good match. This result means that if a dynamical system takes self-similar network-based topology, 
their dominant mode is most likely determined only by the dominant mode of the original factor network, and also that all the other non-dominant modes are quite homogeneous because the distribution of eigenvalues will become normal or log-normal. This result can also be used to find out spectral properties of high-dimensional topological objects, such as 1,000-dimensional hypercube, which is really the 1,000th order Cartesian power of a two-node one-edge graph. All right, that's all I have today. I hope this is enough to illustrate what the graph product multilayer networks are, what their mathematical properties are, and how they can be used for certain types of network modeling and analysis. Again, it's an idealized topological model, which may not capture the true complexity of actual complex networks in the real world. But I believe it can be used as a good reference model for analytical work of approximation, or perhaps as a basic skeleton model of networks that involve multiple orthogonal spaces, to which additional topological features can be added later. Anyway, again I apologize for not being here today. Please have a look at the preprint if you are interested, and feel free to email me any questions or comments. Thank you very much for your attention.